How's it going, everybody? Ash is doing a little bit of seating here. I'm actually just waiting to go do some spraying with the sprayer. I'm kind of waiting for uh, Austin to get up to me with the deck. There's Chapel. <laughs> so, we're doing another experiment. There's always experiments going on. We're seeding hard white wheat, or AKA just wheat, into oat stubble. This is some new land that we bought up here. It's kind of the potholiest of the four. The other three are wide open, just like at the South Farm. You just go up and back, up and back, up and back, up and back. But, yeah, it'll still grow a crop. I'm not worried about going around a few slews. But what I am worried about is volunteer tame oats, you guys. Volunteer tame oats, that's a real thing. That is gonna happen. That's probably why you don't put a cereal back into an oat field. But the reason why we had no choice but to do that is, uh, what's Ashen's plan here? Oh, I see. We're on a line. She's got to get past all these slews and then she can go over there and do fill in on the back side. She's going to leave a little, uh, we like to call a little hook. She'll have to get that later. Beautiful no wind, beautiful no wind. This rarely ever happens, that's why I gotta get spraying. It's just myself and Austin up here and Ashton kind of filled in part time on the drill when I need to go do some spraying. This is our last field of, of uh, white wheat. It's our last field of wheat, actually, period. And uh, we're gonna be going into lentils next, which is why I gotta go do some spraying ahead of the lentils. Holy crap, that was a big spider. I'm not scared of spiders, but that sucker was big on my hand. I almost threw my phone. <laughs> so Mike, you didn't answer the question. Why are you putting wheat in oat stubble there? Why don't you put like a, why don't you put the lentils here? Why don't you put canola here? Something other than a cereal on cereal. It's a really good question, and the reason for that is because all my canola is on that side of the farm, the south side of the north farm. And uh, all my cereals and wheat and lentils are on the north side of the north farm. So I'm not driving for one field. That's a logistical nightmare. Well, Mike, if you're putting lentils just up over here, why don't you stick lentils on here? Uh, because this is kind of like new land, obviously brand new land to me. I don't know what was sprayed out here. Was there a fall chemical spray that, a, that could take out my lentils? Because lentils are super sensitive, all right? So I don't know the history. So for that reason, they're out. Second reason, this one has got some saline in and around these sloughs. Probably seeded the oats for a reason. And uh, lentils don't like getting their feet wet. And this is not the field to put lentils on then. So that's the reason why. Sometimes when you take on different chunks of land or whatever, sometimes you gotta put some canola on some canola to straighten stuff out, and sometimes you gotta put some cereal on cereals to straighten stuff out. See if I can zoom in on the little guy. Oh, uh, there's a windshield wiper in his way. Oh, sorry about that. That's hard to do. It's a lot drier day today. Last night you guys know that I uh, did a video and I had water running down the edges of my hopper. The humidity, the humid, humidex, wow, English is hard, was quite high yesterday. So the previous farmer who owned or farmed this uh, swathed his oats. You can see these rows. One, two, three. You know, you can see all these rows. 
So he combined it north and south, and we're seeding it east and west to get through it. We don't have a harrow. This should have been harrowed. We don't have a harrow. And for questions about the pro tail, pro tail is only for emergency use in the spring because uh, it dries out the top and it throws my depth off. So I won't use a pro tail unless I absolutely positively have to. Oh no, the wind's getting up. Shoot, I shouldn't have said anything. I can feel it. Oh, oh no. Here's the snorkel kits. So it's drawing its air from up here. Otherwise, typically, it draws its air from right there. And you get all that shaft coming off the tire and sticks to it, reduces your airflow, plugs your drill. Ask me how I know. I guess we could get out to a little feeding here. Hear the fans drop down when she opened up or picked up her openers. I feel like I cut it in half. This laid down stuff is hard to get through. This is where we really needed the arrow. going to the other side of the field. She is. Better wave goodbye. She doesn't see us. She doesn't see us. Oh, she sees us. Alright, guys. I gotta go jump on a sprayer, I guess. Good black soil. This is for the mid bander, I believe. So my plan is, since we're gonna have a whole crop of volunteer oats coming in right away, and oats typically can shoot up faster than wheat does, and the problem is, is it will choke out your wheat crop use up its moisture and its fertilizer. So we're gonna be ready with a group one, grassy, cheap, probably 10, 10, 10, 12 bucks. And hopefully we're gonna hit this at like one to two leaf stage, which is the earliest that you can spray without wounding your wheat. And then we're gonna come back around that six leaf stage, six to seven, we'll stretch it out as far as we can with uh, a group two grassy alternating the groups and we'll come back in at that time with our broadleaf control and spray it again and then hopefully that will take care there might be some third and fourth flushes come oh wow Uh, there might be some more flushes come during the summer when we get some summer rains, but it is what it is. That's farming, you guys. Okay. We'll do more videos, hopefully with Ashton seeding. I hope. 
because I always enjoy riding on equipment. I'll catch you guys on the flipper. Adios.